Hello, it's me again. Um, today we're going to talk about vertical structures. Uh, why am I differentiating between vertical structures and horizontal structure? When most people say that the vertical and the horizontal part should be uh, treated as a whole, as a construction method. Uh, I instead believe that you can separate them, also the materials, and that you can have a masonry wall and a wood, uh, wood slab, or you could also combine uh, steel columns and uh, concrete uh, slab. So uh, there are many ways of combining uh, materials and construction methods. This is why I'm treating them separately. We are at the building robotics lab of the Technical University in Munich. You can see that the space I'm in has a frame structure. So in the frame structure, the verticals are rigidly connected to the roof uh, structure and so in this case the separate consideration of vertical and horizontal doesn't make much sense either as they are working together. The mock-up behind me shows a Japanese wood construction detail and in this case um, the detail is about the transition from the vertical to the horizontal. So in this case uh, my method of separating vertical and horizontal uh, would be making less sense, but uh, it's a beautiful construction. So although I'm trying to um, open up the field to more creativity in construction, certain things are sort of excluded, like for example building a massive wall out of steel hasn't been seen very often because steel is a very precious material that you uh, wouldn't use in a massive wall. Or on the other side, uh, making a truss would um, not be making a lot of sense in concrete because concrete is a rather massive, rather heavy material and the truss form doesn't correspond to the uh, material very well. It is quite normal to mix materials as well. For example, in reinforced concrete constructions, you have the rebars taking the tension and the concrete taking uh, the compression. And you could think of um, floor slab constructions uh, mixing wood and concrete, where you have a lower part built in wood and the concrete on top of it. And then you would try to link these and have a um, concrete wood mixed construction. So uh, you can open up the field, but certain combinations don't make a lot of sense and you wouldn't be using them. So one of the um, basic conditions of the vertical element is um, the top and the bottom conditions. Is it um, taken uh, in the ground and then the deformation uh, would be the one of a big wave. So if I'm articulating it at the bottom and at the top, then its deformation would be half of that big wave that I've been showing you in the last case. Then if I'm guiding it in the lower part, let's see, and having an articulation on the top, then we have the third Euler case. Euler was a German engineer. And if I'm guiding it at the top and at the bottom, then it would be, the wave would be even uh, shorter. The shorter the wave uh, gets, the, the smaller I can dimension this vertical element. And I will try to um, 
to have a cast in a sort of frame uh, corner as to be able to reduce the dimension of the vertical element. So, as I have been telling you before, the sense of our load-bearing construction is to create a surface. Surface that, uh, for example, somebody could walk on. And uh, then when the span gets too big, then I can support the surface by, um, by beams. The surface then only spans from one beam uh, to the next and uh, the beams are carrying the load to something which is at the end of the beam and that could be for example a wall so I could support these beams uh, by a wall and in the wall I have an opening now if I carry this a little further I could uh, have a bigger opening so, mm -hmm. And then if I carry it even further, I could say, okay, I'm having um, two um, sort of um, wall segments and I have uh, a beam in the other direction. Or well, then I could change the proportion a little and say I'm having a horizontal beam and it sits on columns and now the opening has been so much um, changed in size that I'm getting to a skeleton system yeah? where I have a primary beam and the secondary beams and the element that is creating the surface. So if I'm looking at this uh, the other way around and I'm saying I want to have a wall and an opening in the wall and I don't need all the degree of opening that the skeleton offers, then I could opt for different ways of building this wall. For example, I could build it out of logs, or I could uh, introduce a frame, construction which is very popular in the United States, or I could build it out of masonry, which is uh, similar to the logs, but it has vertical joints as well. And these vertical joints have to be alternated to give it rigidity. This alternation is called a bond. And um, <coughs> I could go ahead and say it's massive as well. Uh, for example, by making it out of reinforced uh, concrete or there's an alteration to the frame, which would be the half-timbered building. Half-timbered having less uh, verticals and they would be capable of um, standing without the cladding from both Sides. So we can dissociate uh, vertical and horizontal construction. They are quite often mixed in the part of the world where I'm living. Um, reinforced concrete uh, floor slabs in combination with masonry are very popular, for example in other countries of the world, like the United States of America. Um, for a one-family home, you will have a frame construction for the wall and uh, for the floor slabs as well. And uh, you could combine this with the masonry, uh, maybe not the concrete with the uh, lightweight uh, wall construction uh, and we will look into the specific uh, construction methods a little further as we uh, go ahead in this lecture series.